Hello there, folks. Thank you for tuning into the light once again. I'm so excited to be bringing you another broadcast. And also, I am stoked about all of the love that I'm getting on that last video. Uh, the excitement and um, the feedback is wonderful. Uh, I, I had a great experience going down there, and I'm just honored to be able to cover the Hemp Inc. Veterans Kins Village project and to... Um, bring it to you all. Uh, I, I really appreciate the support and the feedback, and uh, I look forward to continuing to follow that company and that project. Hopefully, I will get to go back on down there in the summer when the grow-off is kicking off and show you what's going on. There are huge things happening all over the place as the hemp industry and the marijuana industry are taking off as there's more acceptance and this wave of legalization. Big things are happening everywhere. And today I want to cover big things happening in the Canadian marijuana marketplace and cover some of the um, stories about that marketplace and these big publicly traded uh, companies, um, specifically Aurora Cannabis and Canopy Growth. Um, now I wanted to start off talking about this interesting article on Reuters, actually. The title is, Canada's Trudeau isn't talking about it, but legal pot is going well. Long lines formed on a sub-zero morning last week to buy marijuana over-the-counter from three different shops in Ottawa, the first capital in the industrialized world, to open them. Though the day highlighted the realization of Prime Minister Trudeau's promise to legalize cannabis during his 20, uh, 2015 campaign, neither he nor anybody else from the ruling Liberal Party was taking credit for it, a sign that, so, that the social stigma of marijuana is still strong. Aside from difficulty keeping up with demand, legalization has gone smoothly. Online pot sales to adults began nationally on October 17th, but storefronts only opened in the province of Ontario, which includes the capital, on April 1st very recently. Now, six months before a national election, polls show liberals deadlocked or trailing the rival conservative party, and Trudeau is being cautious about weed now. Though conservative leader Andrew Scheer has said he would not reverse legalization if elected, he has repeatedly expressed worries about safety, especially around people driving while high, and has said more young people might start uh, trying marijuana now. Uh, and, you know, these are reasonable concerns, uh, although uh, as, as, as with alcohol, it's all about moderation, um, you know, everything in moderation, and, you know, there's no reason to stigmatize marijuana uh, in any kind of space special or extraordinary way. Um, it's good to see the acceptance growing, but also these are valid concerns. And now is the time where uh, we have an opportunity to properly regulate it and to do research and to understand more about this incredible plant, which we haven't even really been able to research for decades and decades due to prohibition. Now, this article says there are there are some communities like the Vancouver suburb of Richmond, where 55 percent of the population um, list their ethnic origin as Chinese and they've prohibited cannabis storefronts there. But also they talk about how legalization has gone well, um, but the issue is not a primary focus of the election. Uh, it also talks about that it's now safer to be a consumer because of regulation, uh, officials are saying, adding that black market sales are falling and legal jobs and revenue are being created. Now, interviews with customers and retailers at the Ottawa stores reveal that even if Trudeau is not talking about it, legalization has generated goodwill. Jessica says, I live close by, and I'm excited to see how this store will change the neighborhood. I did not vote liberal last time, but I might this time. Um... She's huddled close to an outdoor heater in front of the Fire and Flower store, which is just a 10-minute walk from both Prime Minister Trudeau's office and Parliament. Um, the shop's two license holders said, We have a deep appreciation for the opportunity we've been granted. So people are just excited seeing the economic opportunities, the growth, jobs, and also these cool things happening in their communities surrounding these storefronts and the industry in general. Uh, the article also covers... Um, some, some interesting financial statistics from Vivian Nazaire, a financial analyst who follows cannabis companies for Cohen and, um, and company in New York. Uh, she says she sees a bright future for the marijuana industry. I'm not surprised. I would say the very same thing. The future is very, very bright. Uh, and Wall Street and these analysts are starting to wake up to it finally. 
Uh, now, she forecasts cannabis retail sales reaching $3.6 billion in 2019, including taxes. She sees illicit sales declining to 11% of the total sales by 2025 from 90% last year. And um, she says by 2025, Canadian recreational weed revenue will total $10 billion, with medical marijuana at about $2 billion. The stigma is rolling away, Azara said. And the article ends with a funny quip. Uh, Cheryl, in 55, said the promise to legalize marijuana was one of the main reasons why she voted for Trudeau in 2015. She says, I like Justin. Most women do. He's kind of cute. <laughs> it's a great article. I'm so excited to just see things like that being published uh, and to see the stigma truly rolling away, as Vivian Azar, this financial analyst, says, um, as we start to understand cannabis, start to accept it, and this kind of fear and stigmatization is disappearing as legalization goes worldwide and the industry is growing worldwide. And we're seeing massive things happening with these publicly traded companies, specifically Canopy Growth and Aurora Cannabis. Now, um, Aurora Cannabis and Canopy Growth are just neck and neck uh, with production capacity, market cap, uh, and market share. But right now, Canopy Growth is the biggest publicly traded marijuana company in the world in market cap. Um, they, they are huge, and they also have a great expansion internationally, even to Australia and elsewhere. Very cool. But they have an interesting strategy that's um, a, a, a quite unlike Aurora Cannabis, as they are focused on the brands, on the process of how to grow, um, how to set up these businesses, uh, acquiring cool brands, patented products, and uh, you know, creating marketing to make their businesses successful through deals with companies, large and small. It's very impressive. It's a different focus, a different strategy, but it's paid off very well for them, especially with their deal, Constellation Brands, purchasing 38% of Canopy Growth stock in 2018, boosting their company and also giving them both a uh, pipeline for revenue and these new really cool products that Constellation Brands is undoubtedly going to be um, making with them, uh, you know, infused alcoholic beverages. It's going to be very cool and it's, you know, very awesome seeing this company growing and, um, you know, supporting these cool brands almost like in a venture capital kind of model. I'm, I'm very impressed with Canopy Growth and uh, they're also up there with about 500,000 kilograms per year of production capacity uh, just behind Aurora Cannabis. Aurora coming in at over 700,000 kilograms per year now. Um, however, we also have this kind of negative article coming from Scotia Bank talking about that a, a canopy growth is um, due for some serious earnings misses in the next quarter or two as analysts were uh, using kind of the wrong numbers, using... Um, the, the wrong kind of metrics to predict it. And uh, they're saying that they might even have a decline in revenues from fourth quarter of 2018. A lot of this is probably due to expansion and, you know, R and D, but um, it could be a rough ride, a bumpy year for canopy growth stock. Uh, despite that Scotia bank itself also places a $56 annual price target on Aurora cannabis, showing a solid upside potential from here, despite any potential earnings misses. Um, and really, these earnings misses are going to be at, happening as the company smoothens everything out and continues finalizing and making big deals and kicking off their production, kicking off their storefronts and investing in their own businesses. Um, so, you know, it's nothing to worry about in my opinion, but uh, it could be a bumpy ride for Canopy Growth stock. Uh, this also has put kind of a damper on the industry in that sector in general, but um, uh, Scotiabank still is very hopeful, very positive with a $56 price target on canopy growth. Now, I also want to talk about Aurora Cannabis, a huge story with Aurora as with Nelson Peltz now, they're already inking another deal, getting moving in the international space where they are by far number one with, again, canopy just trailing by a little bit. But Aurora Cannabis now has an exclusive deal in Germany with the German Institute of Health and Medicine. They have purchased the maximum uh, number that they could of lots to grow cannabis, four of the available 
available 13 lots provided by the German government in a deal, an exclusive deal in fact, that allows them to produce a minimum of 4,000 kilograms per year for the German government um, which will be purchased by the German government, used for medical marijuana distribution and sales, as well as allowing Aurora Cannabis, a government-backed platform for research and development, as Aurora Cannabis has some incredible um, patented medical products in a pipeline that they're testing and putting through trials right now. So this is very cool. And finally, we can see some research happening, government-backed research, large-scale studies on cannabis so that we can learn about it and learn not only about the potential hazards and side effects of cannabis that we can only speculate on, but also about the amazing uses of the many terpenes and compounds found in cannabis. You know, it's more than just THC. There's CBD, very important, and there's far more than that. CBN, uh, THCV, and a, a vast number of compounds that each have different curative and medical benefits. So we're finally going to start to see this happen. It's incredible. It's such a fascinating plant. And I'm so excited to see Aurora Cannabis uh, and a government actually taking the initiative to start kicking off this research. Very, very cool stuff. Very exciting. Um, it also is placing Aurora Cannabis again as the leader internationally and allowing them to expand both their footprint and... Um, as far as sales and marketing and exposure, as well as their production capacity. And um, that th that's very important for them. Very important. Um, very cool stuff. And I want to talk to you guys last but not least about a very cool band. Now, you've got to check out the Southern Sinners. They're coming from Texas and about to tour and rock the West, uh, ending up in L.A. where they're going to have a big show with Pretty Boy Floyd and... Um, you know, some other really cool bands. It's extremely exciting stuff. Um, and this is a really cool group of guys and a great sound. I mean, I've heard it, but, uh, you know, it's still under wraps right now. You're going to have to go to the show if you want to hear it. But you can also order the album on pre-sale right now on their website. And I'll link you to that. Now, I'd love it if you all would go like and follow them on Facebook uh, because it's a cool band, cool group of guys, and a cool sound as well. Kind of... Um, kind of country rock and roll and um i'm loving it i'm so excited to see what they're about to do they've been working so hard on their music and now they're ready to bring it to the world to bring it to you um so you know i hope that you'll enjoy that and check that band out now folks Thank you again so much for tuning in to The Light. I hope that you appreciate the video. I hope that this information is valuable to you. And, um, you know, I'd love your feedback. Give me a, a like or dislike. Please leave me a comment. And please subscribe to the channel if you want to be alerted and notified about future videos and content. Um, now, folks, again, I really appreciate all of you. Much love. And I will see you in the next one.